Hey. Hey. hey, welcome to channel14.com's Bodega Nights. I am Joe. I'm Saxo Paolo. Introduce yourself. Uh, Lawrence Panganiban, or under my pen name, Kaiser Sensei from Enigma Works. Yeah, uh, Paolo's brother, so... It's been a, it's, yeah, it's been a while, actually, right? He hasn't been, yeah, he hasn't been here for, for a while. Last I was here, we were talking about floating fat men who can who fly with weird anti-gravitational effects with the flab from their love handles. Uh, the, the thing I remember from you guys was uh, that, that Bodega Nights episode with where, where we talked about Godzilla. Oh, uh, yeah, that one. That, oh, that was one. the first time you guys were on. I can, I can distinctly remember that. Mm. Um, yeah. Right. So, uh, who's taking point? Paul, are you taking point? Or mm. should I take point? Uh, or, uh, either way. Uh, we were talking about 90s comics before, like, before, before we sure. started recording. Yeah. Um, what was it? Like, the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages. But, the but dark. then not really... <laughs> The the, the the dark ages, but at the same time, like the high points for certain here for certain uh, franchises and characters. I mean, I remember that was during the time when the two hottest properties in Marvel were Spider Man and the X Men. I mean, they yeah. were everywhere, and that was really the height of the of their fame. Really, I I'll mean, be honest. My uh, image, cartoons, my image, exactly. of the movies. The, my image of the X Men is forever. Forever nailed to like the '90s cartoon is your peg, right? Yes. Mm. Like when, when we think when we think Wolverine, we don't think we we think of him in in, in yellow spandex, yellow with, stri- <laughs> with yellow with black stripes and, and, and these those, blue accents, and those the those those uh, ear like that ear design mask. We yeah, back. dude. We, it's either that or no mask at all. For, for me, it's either that or no mask at all because yeah. I can't th- easily think of him in brown, right? And, and um. Cyclops with that blue and yellow, and with the ha- with the hair showing, with the hair. and the way that um, what's her name sounds, the way the rogue sounds. Yes, like a lot of it, like like whenever I read um, whenever I read the X Men now, I always think of the voice of that girl that did Rogue, no, with that, um, uh, the, that really nice Southern accent. Yeah, so the nice Louisiana accent. Yeah, and and, um, and, and Gambit as well, like yeah. that that funny raspy like eh. raspy uh, Creole <laughs> accent, bon ami. Yeah. raspy Creole accent. And yeah. I mean that's always a point uh, with any. With all X Men fans, like, 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 I remember when I talked to to a friend of mine back in high school. He's really big on X Men. Um, when the when X Men Origins Wolverine was first announced, <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> we're going down that road. I see. Okay, like, uh, well, well, we can all talk about that movie. But when it was first announced, I remember one thing he said to me. If they mess up with the accent of Gambit, because they confirmed that Gambit, oh, Gambit yeah, yeah, is going to yeah. be in that movie, it, they said if they mess up with his accent, that's going to be like a mortal sin to the <laughs> uh, to the X Men community. <laughs> but, but, well, arguably though, like um, when when we think of the X Men though, you do have uh, the era of like you know, John Byrne and stuff, which was the eighties. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I guess it's it's sort of like that. Um, that uh, what do you call it? Like like that transition from being part of the subculture that and and it sort of percolates into uh, mainstream culture. So like mm-hmm. the X Men was sort of like that in mm-hmm. the sense that um, if you were reading the comics, I would think that the golden age of the X Men, well, not necessarily the golden age, but like it it, it was in it's the highest 80th. point. In yeah, in, as as I mean, so far as the comics are concerned, uh, it was the run of John Byrne. Uh, but then, like, was this before know. or after we had? Storm? It was well, days of future past. Oh, okay. So ah. wait, this was already after we had like Storm Beast and yeah, yeah, Storm yeah. Beast and Wolverine. Well, f- you're thinking of like the very original like pre cancellation X Men, right? Yeah, I'm thinking. You mean the, the super like the really first <laughs> original team? That's that yeah. was Beast Angel. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm looking back. Marvel I'm, Girl. It's Marvel Girl exactly. Oh, uh, oh yeah, Beast without the blue without the fur. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He didn't have any fur back then. Yeah, basically, that I am. A, I remember back that. Far back. That was the really f- original team, the, like the very first one. That mm. was when they were teenagers, actually. Uh, yeah, that was. Uh, what was it? It was. Um, it, it was pre-cancellation X Men because when you think about X Men, right? You think about pre-cancellation and post-cancellation X-Men mm. um, because they were cancelled for a little while because of like poor sales the, okay. the comics? yeah dude well this was like way the back entire, like, in the 70s I suppose <laughs> ba- back when they were still all in blue <laughs> like alright correct <laughs> yeah yeah blue yeah. and yellow <laughs> yeah so <laughs> there we go yeah. um, wait it was black and yellow no it was blue and Marvel Girl was green and yellow huh. well it was a dark color and yellow 
No, it's green and yellow. Ma- uh, Jean, when she was Marvel girl. She dark g- yellow mask. Yeah, but green, dark. So- when, Jean when, dress. When, yes, but all I recall was that whatever tone of the color I, we are describing, it was always a dark tone. No, it mm. actually was light green. There, I, I guess I do have to give like proper credit though. Uh, Days of Future Past was Chris Claremont and John Byrne. Ah, so right. that was like. That was like the golden age of the X Men, and then like it, it lasted from the late seventies into the eighties, and then um, it, it hit popular culture in a big way in the nineties mm. with the animated series. With the animated series, and and that stupid arcade game that I can never really get to like, can't finish it. <laughs> Didn't we finish it in the farm? You guys did. <laughs> We're doing a let's play. Well, that, that was because you had infinite lives and continues. No, no, no. We, uh, that's it, true. <laughs> yeah, but we. Yeah, but no, no. But in, no, no, no. In, in I know what days, happened. You'd have to get. What, like, uh, Jao, wasn't this? Wasn't this the time? Wasn't this the time that you had to bring John back home? It might have been because, like, when we went to, like, when he we went up into the mountain, did like. It's what, like, a three-hour, three, four-hour. Like, it was four drive. hours on a, on the first trip. Yeah, so it's, it's like a three-hour drive up. Oh. Uh, so I brought John back to the city because uh, reasons, because he had to fly back. So that's three hours, then I had to drive three hours back. Ooh, six. Yeah, well, uh, it, it was a bit longer because of traffic, right? So, Ooh, darn. I, well, I, I spent, practically spent half the day. I spent uh, the duration of an entire working day in the car that day. <laughs> like, uh, pretty cool. Well, yeah. <laughs> Alone with my thoughts for half of it. <laughs> and that's going to be an interesting thing to tell. <laughs> You know, we never, we never, we never managed to successfully get that uh, that uh, time lapse working. Now, did we? Oh, it's it's there. So I, I uh, is it working? because my phone kept dying. <laughs> well, could it? Can it be salvaged? No, can't, no, no, can't be. Okay, because what like like what's there to salvage if your phone is like dead? You can't, you know. Yeah, yeah you, 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 all you need to do is revive it. You, know, you just need those those uh, uh re- 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 what's those electric like defibs? The, 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 yeah, the, the, the defib, the, the, yeah, the free, free, like, the thingies. We don't. But then what happened though, right? Because like we got through about half the tr- we, we we got about halfway to yeah. the city on a time lapse, and yeah. my phone died at that point, right? So it's like okay, never mind. I'm not doing this anymore. I give up. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. So going back to '90s comics, I re- I, I was mentioning. Um, Spider-Man, the cover by Todd McFarlane, mm. because before Todd McFarlane was a image. yeah, before he decided to be all rebellious and form Image and start the whole '90s rrr thing. Well, yeah, with Spawn and all that. Yeah, I, I think it was the '90s, or it could have been the late '80s. He had this like iconic cover where it is Spider-Man doing the whole Spider-Man pose thing on webbing. Ah, I remember that. And, right, that cover. and the blue on his suit was darker. Yeah, yeah, that, and that then, was. Uh, he was crouched. Yes, that was a Todd uh, McFarlane and cover. And it was this web going like. Uh, yeah. It's like as if he was like a spider yes. in the middle of the web. I remember that one. I can never forget. I never forget. I, that I forgot cover. what was that cover for. What was the plot of that one? I, I don't know. That, that's the other thing that's beautiful about 90s comics. Like they screws the plot. Oh, <laughs> right. it just, just had these beautiful, beautiful art, iconic yeah, art. covers. You know, mm. you could just say you could just consider the cover like a painting. So basically, right. just it's, throw it's, out all the text and then there. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, what's it like? I, I I don't know. Like I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned this on one of our podcasts, mm. but like comics flip flop back and forth. The, right? Yeah, you mentioned this. Uh, uh, it was on Bodega Nights, the one where on David the was on. Cast. Yeah, yeah, on um, the farm casts. Flip flops between writer artist writer artist. Yeah. Um, like right now, it's it's pretty much like focused on the writer. So we have again like guys like them, Scott Snyder and Jeff Johns. Um, you know, on the Marvel side of things, you got like Brian Michael Bendis. Um, but then like in the '90s, it was all about the artist, right? You had Jim Lee, you had uh, Todd McFarlane. Mm. And then before that. It was like the British invasion. So yeah, so like, like in, the, in the DC side, there's like a for, uh, Mo, uh, Mark Mark Miller, Millar? Mark Millar, Mark Miller. Mark. The, the two different people. Anyway, um, in in uh, in the in the eighties, right? That was like them. Alan Moore. Uh, Alan Moore. Uh, yes. Uh, what was it? Neil Gaiman. Yeah, Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman. Like, uh, 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 Scottish guy. I keep on forgetting his name. Was I forgot it the last Adam or Grant Morrison? Grant Morrison. Yeah, exactly. So, like, um, it, it flip-flops between writer and artist, right? Um, yeah, going like going all the way back, you know, it, it started out with uh, Stan Lee, right? Like, writer. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, back in the, the primordial era of uh, 
comics on uh, they were just these random things sh- sold in newspaper stands and then among they the, were actually the sold radio- as part of the newspapers I it, depends. It, it, it depends hmm? well um what's it um uh, the very first well let's use uh what's his name scott mcleod let's use scott mcleod's like nomenclature uh sequential art um well you can't no uh they they originally were like comic strips Okay. In newspapers. In newspapers. And the very first like comic book issues as we understand them were compilations, were compilations of, of the, the newspaper of the newspaper comic book strips. Oh, okay. And then from there, uh, artists and writers started think, may, you, ter- treating that as a medium. Yeah, as a medium. As a separate medium. And then later on over time and then they made stories about cowboys and fairy tales. Yeah, comic horror, book romances. Exactly. And then later on Thanks to the innovation, the wild imagination of these two oppressed Jewish boys, we have the first <laughs> superhero, which is Superman. Uh, oh, at least one of the first. The spirit. Uh, I, I don't know if he counts. Um, then, yeah, uh, it, it it's it's interesting to look at though. Like thinking about um, the parallel between like comic strips being compiled and becoming um, books, like anthologies. comic books. Well, uh, because. Uh, uh, a comic, uh, a comic book has like twenty pages in it, right? Yeah, and a typical mm-hmm. issue, twenty, twenty-five. Uh, initially, those were all like compilations of comic strips that you find in newspapers, right? Mm, they're mm. usually about what five panels each strip per. Yeah, so page. like it, 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 it's a compilation in the form of a comic book, mm. and then eventually this twenty-page thing became its own medium. Mm. I see a parallel with the trade paperback. Ah, yes. How it's becoming like, uh, how it's become a medium in and of itself, right? Right, right. Like, yes. because trades. They use. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Trade paperbacks are nothing more than collections of the monthly books. Yes. yes. Right? So, <laughs> but then but then now it's becoming like a medium on its own. So For, Yes, yeah. because new stories yeah. are now being released in trade paperback form now. Yeah. A lot of stories. Yes, from what I know, a lot of stories, like, they skip the whole issue thing and just go straight to paperback. Yeah, like, uh, Grant Morrison, right? He has, um, what's it called? Earth 1 or something. Was it Earth 1 or Earth 2? Earth 2 is a, Earth 2 is a weekly book. Um, I don't, not weekly. It's a, it's a monthly book. Uh, I dropped it after that British guy stopped writing it. Um, but, but that, that's, that's the thing, though, right? Like, when you think of, when you are first introduced to comic books, at least like nowadays, mm. uh, the first things that you pick up, uh, Watchmen, um, Sandman, Preludes and Nocturnes, right? Mm. Like these are like stories in and of themselves. Mm. But like when they first came out, they were released monthly. Mm, yes. And I see mm. like an interesting sort of parallel between cor- correlation. I'm not sure what the word is, but I see like... Uh, uh, similarity, similarity there. in the parallelism <laughs> in the what in the progression of the in the progression of the distribution form no it's more so of the how something that would just was before a collection of of uh, things uh, released in a regular uh, basis let's say back before it was strips. daily five panel strips yeah. into a book into a single book which and is 20 pages now 20 the page 20 issue. page issue. monthly releases are being collected okay. into 50 like into 100 plus page like uh, yeah uh, hardcover trades hard, hard, whatever hardcover trade, or trade paperbacks books. and then all the then all those trade paperbacks are, get compiled into an omnibus uh, not necessarily. But what I was going for was, and this is linked to Enigma Works because you guys, what I noticed, like you, you, you guys have not so much like individual monthly comics, but like a big story in like a fifty-page thing. Yes. So, like, is that is that where we're going in terms of like uh, sequential art in terms of comics? Possibly, you know. Um, so. I, you know, I noticed uh, like. With some, uh, lo- at least here in the Philippines, I noticed that uh, a bit of that because there was a f- handful of uh, local releases that are distributed in trade ba- paperback form. Okay, yeah. In the get go, they don't, never released it monthly uh, from the beginning. They just went straight to trade paperback. I think the reasoning behind that is, I think uh, it's easier for people to just compile 
a larger story into a thicker book and release it in a uh, how say a less frequent rate compared to yeah. thinner book thinner book then release more monthly rapidly. yeah I mean uh, wait uh, issue wait just to be just to clarify uh, issues of comics are released monthly or weekly uh, what do you mean because like comics come out every Wednesday but then each title is released once a month. Right, so say Batman is what second second Wednesday of the month. Okay, mm. so wait, only one issue per month. Uh, per series, yeah, per per series, per series. Okay, uh, I remember there there are two there are two titles of note. I can three titles of note uh, at least locally made in Philippines that are released in trade paperback form. Uh, two of these are done already because one was a short series, I think, just a two parter book, okay. and then uh, the other ones like. Be, uh, expanded within five books or six books. Uh, there was uh, Sky World mm-hmm. and uh, Love in a Bag. Okay, those were released in trade paperback form. These were th- pretty thick books. Uh, they were not colored uh, inside though. Uh, they're yeah, black like, and white, like Walking Dead style mm-hmm. or Punk Rock Jesus style. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and then there's also Angel Crush. I think that one's still ongoing. So, made by the same guys as Love in a Bag. They were released in trade paperback form. Yeah, because well, it it also has a, the, it it has an impact on the storytelling. Mm. Yes, right? because of yes, the pacing. Does. Yeah, because of the pacing, exactly. Mm. Like, um, what's it? Like when you when you read a when you read <coughs> a regular issue, like a regular comic book issue, mm. um, you're supposed to have like a beginning, middle, and end within that twenty pages. Within twenty yes. pages, but then it but then it all has to like come together. When you have your like three or four part story that you compile into, uh, in, into, into a, a trade, thicker, yeah, into a, th- into a trade paperback, or even a special those special thicker issues like back like in the nineties, you have those <laughs> mega size issues that are like thirty yeah, pages dude. or so. Oh, they still oh, have yeah. those. <laughs> they still have those at the time. With yeah, they do. They comics. do actually, <laughs> especially in like the in like uh, big big uh, big storylines. Yeah, big uh, like big. Crossover arcs, yeah, or like a Spider-Man seven hundred. Mm. Spider-Man seven hundred was it? Oh yeah, also an or yeah anniversaries. Yeah, anniversaries. Or if they uh, reach a certain number, and mm. like uh, when, like oh man, bat uh, bat Batman, I, the detective, the detective. Even though like uh, DC did the whole New Fifty Two thing, like rebooted the whole universe. Mm. Um, so detective number fifteen or something. Uh, would have been the ninth, the nine hundredth issue of Detective Comics if they had kept with uh, kept the original numbering, so it was like a big issue thing. Oh, okay, it was bigger. Oh. Yeah, like fatter. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, DC, 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 DC. <laughs> uh, DC, indeed. Looking was this the third time they rebooted it? No, dude. Um, if if you want, like. Well, there was a crisis. Well, yeah, but then they didn't. They, they didn't uh, mess with the numbering then. Ah, uh, yeah, correct. Right, oh. like if 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 you want, um, what what's it? The people that mess with numbering a lot, Marvel. Oh yeah, like they, those guys correct. screw their numbering Actually, so much. A- ev- after every series, I think. Yeah, yeah, and, and it always gets back to number one. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, oh, like, uh, yeah, they like make I remember, of doing that. Like, I remember, uh. I was w- at one point <laughs> regularly following the new Thor series that, that mm. came out in the m- late mid two thousands. This was when Thor came back from the dead after the Ragnarok series. Yeah, uh, yeah. The R- Ragnarok happened after a- Avengers disassembled. Right. And uh, I followed that because it was so cool and how Thor went about there. He he got the Odin Force. Yeah, uh, be- yeah, yeah. Because o- because he inherited stuff from Odin, he was. The most par one in at least in Earth six one six, the main Marvel yep. universe. He was possibly in the strongest form he was ever been in. Yeah, and he was so cool going about bringing back the Asgardians from the dead, and then even <laughs> p- plopping Asgard in Oklahoma, yeah. of all places. <laughs> it was floating it, like just one foot above the ground, just to say that they're not. Inv- encroaching in American t- territory. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and this was yes, post. Yes, and yes. this was post Civil War. He, there was this really cool thing where he was, where he even uh, threatened. Uh, Tony Stark went off to uh, be Tony Stark. Be, be he, Tony Stark. He, and he went off and to superhero registration act, and Thor's response was, "Did he shock him or just thwack him?" 
He thwacked him. He boom with hammer, and I just he completely wrecked the su- his suit. And then he told them just to walk back home. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was following that, and then it got to the arcs, the dark rain, and all that. Yeah. And then after that came. The heroic age after Dark Rain, and then boom, they changed the numbers again. <laughs> yeah, they changed the numbering. Like they did that with Spider Man, but then what they did <coughs> after that was they, like they, like they, 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 uh, they started with issue one for Spider Man, right? Mm, yeah. And then they ran for like a year or something, mm. and then they reverted back to the old numbering, what? which, which kind of like. Messed me up a little bit. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Oh, uh, like, like they, okay, it end, at the end of the year, it ended at what number? For example, oh, so let, let's so uh, so so let's just say right, it it, it had been running, uh, and it it is currently at three hundred. Let's just say right. Yeah. Uh, they they went back to number one, released like twenty issues, thirty issues, or whatever. Then it and became three hundred one. Went to three hundred thirty. Like what? Okay, cool. Uh, I, I understand. Yeah, cool. Sure. Uh, what's this like related to spectacular to I'm not, not spectacular I mean now that's the superior com- Spider-Man I uh, don't know no, no. and you know, that's the funny thing about <coughs> Spider-Man in the 90s and even up to the early 2000s when they in the labeling of the comics it was split into three titles yeah it was it was they amazing uh, spectacular, spectacular and, sens- and sensational. sensational and it would be coming out consecutively but the numbering is based on the title. Yeah. It's like, and strangely, the, you know, that's the, se- the sequencing is like, like, for example, Amazing Spider-Man number one, then, then Sensational Spider-Man number five, then, then yeah, Spectacular, yeah. spectacular number, seven. number seven. And it's like that. The weird I, thing that I, actually <laughs> messed with some people, I think, was the fact that you had the, you had storylines progressing in the manner that the first part of a storyline would be in, in amazing, then it would continue in spectacular, then it would continue in sensational, then that, back, that's, that's the back thing all that's, over um, again. Uh, that's... Like, comics are weird. Yeah. Like, they are very weird. But mm. what I noticed is, like, once you're in comics, like, once you once you read them, once you pick them up monthly, like... You get it? All of the weirdness just... You just get it. It, you know? you get it just it. makes it just, sense, you it know. It just makes sense. I mean, even even when <laughs> you have storylines that cross over between series, yeah, right, like r- remember, sense. like certain like sub- everything. So, remember, like, everything. Yeah, it I all remember makes like sense. those. Remember those old sub arcs, like let's say there's a Ghost Rider and Spider Man mm. crossover. It's like oh, it's like a uh, Knights of Vengeance. It it comes. Fr- it starts from Amazing Spider-Man numbers fifty, and it continues continues on in part two in Ghost Rider number twenty three, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but was- then, but then, like when you're following the book monthly, it just makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you get it. I don't exactly. know exactly. If for some odd reason you you just get up with the flow. Yeah, well, I, I suppose it's like some get- weird no- modern stuff that you just don't get, but somehow you just get used to it. Apparently. Well, yeah. Like, uh, name one. What weird modern. Uh, thing, I don't know. Know. But, like, say, like, like if you everything read. Everything uh, on the internet? Yeah. Well, no, not really. Well, well not everything, but. A l- <laughs> not everything, but a lot of. A lot of. The fact that you. The fact that you could do. The. Uh, f- uh, well, not. A, the, the fact that a lot of your tasks can be digitized. Can be. Okay. Yeah. I'm not saying they are. <laughs> huh. I was. Um, have any of you guys read. Um, Girls by the Lunar Brothers. Girls. Girls. I may have heard. Of I've the heard title. of it. Okay. Okay. Because I'm looking for like, uh, one of my friends in law school. Uh, shout out to Ling. She's she's really getting into comic books. Yeah. yeah. Um. Her her boyfriend is really into like the whole superhero thing. Yeah. <laughs> so like. That's cool. So she 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 gets all of her superhero recommendations from him. But like for me. I, I'm giving her all sorts of like weird indie books, you know. Uh-huh. Like even though, um, like I, I really do like indie books, but I haven't been able to keep up with too many of them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I've uh, suggested Girls by the Lunar Brothers because it's just really weird. Um, have you guys read The Underwater Welder by Jeff Lemire? Hmm. Yes, I, uh, sorry, I okay. haven't heard of it. Uh, what else? Right now, right now, as far as, as far as non-major label comics are concerned, a lot of the ones I've been reading so far have been web comics. Oh, um, what's it? No, like, no, uh, that there's a completely different thing altogether. Yeah. <laughs> have, have you been? Um, have you read Battle Pug? Battle Pug? Yeah. Um, first time I heard of it. 
You should check it out, dude. It's so cool. <laughs> I yeah, I battle pu- pug as in the dog. As in the dog. Battle pug. Yeah. Like okay, I I need to check this out because I like I need something. Does it involve a pug? It involves a pug. Yes, exactly. exactly. I yes, I need it. something to fill my time while <laughs> it waiting. Is it a pug pug or an anthropomorphic pug? Um, it's it's a it's it's a pug like a a dog. Like a dog pug. <laughs> well, um, it's it's a uh, the, the battle pug. Uh, it's it's oh, um it's it's, it's a story about like a, a hero, like a warrior hero guy, and like the and, and like a pug, like a, a huge pug that he rides around to like holy crap thwart it's evil or something. <laughs> it's so good. Size. Yeah, it's it's a really good book. It's a really good book. Um, it's by Mike Norton. Okay, Ooh, and, uh, I gotta check this out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it, it's it's framed uh, the well that that's like the story within the story right? because it's framed. Um, there's this princess who has two dogs, and she's telling them the story of Battle Pug. Oh, so huh. it's it's like a oh the story in a story type thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, okay. I always so... love the things where those stories like that where someone's narrating it. <laughs> Not yeah, it's just something that happened in the past. I always love that uh, approach. Yeah, so here this is what the art looks like. I'm yeah, it's it's a uh, it's Battle Pug, man. Mike Norton, you check it out if you're into what oh, comics. I like the art. <laughs> He's big and silly. Right, it's it's, it's adorable. The Wait, there's oh, a Chinese yeah. midget. There's a Chinese midget. So yeah. Um, what, what hey, this guy like? reminds me of like the old Conan, right? Yes. So, so it, it's yes, it's got that whole um, fantasy element to it as well. So, <laughs> it's um the, the, the dog fanta- reminds me of Lockjaw, except a pug. In some fantasy, e- it, the fantasy epic with a giant pug. Yeah, dude. So, and um, what's it? They they uh, what's it? what's it? They have they have a book out already. Like they yeah. compiled. They compiled a bunch of them. Did so, was this a monthly release? Uh, web comics are weird. <laughs> Wait, that's a web comic. It's a web comic. Web comic. Oh, so web comics are weird. Oh, they release so, anywhere from. Oh, wo- so that was a web comic, and they released a collection. Yeah. D- yeah, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the new thing that's happening now. Depending uh, on depending on the creator, it's either they either do it once a week or anywhere anywhere from once to even three times a week. I I know. Yeah, let's see. Depending know. on whether or not the creator has a has a job or whether the creator is mi- using the cut web comic as his job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm not sure. I think they have. I, I know that volume one is out already. I'm not sure if like volume two. It's not finished though, is it? Uh, it's still ongoing. Okay. Because that, that's the thing with web comics; they keep on running forever. Mm, no, because I know a number. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know a number of web comics that finished. Granted, I haven't read them, but I know they've finished. But you know, the funny yeah, yeah, yeah. thing also is you'd think that a certain webcomic might finish. And then all of a sudden it continues again. Mm. Like, uh, uh, here's one uh, popular one. I think you guys may have hear- heard of this. Uh, you guys heard of Grim Tales. Yeah, of course. Now, it... Wait, wait, what? Yeah, Grim Tales. Are you Tales, telling the me... One uh, with the, the uh, no, no, it's... It, the Grim, it, it restarted. The it restarted. It... Yeah, you think it's ended at the point where the son of Grimm and Mandy was telling the story and it stopped there, right? Mm-hmm. No, they just they recontinued it. Uh, I think a few years, uh, like one two years back. Okay. And there are new characters now. Like there are new characters now and new stories. Like now they introduce like the the daughter. Uh, for those who don't know, Grim Tales is a is a. A fan made co- uh, a fan comic a fan mm. web comic featuring various characters from Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon all crossed together in, all crossed in together a in a very style. high in a very in a highly stylized fashion in mm. a very in a very interesting original crossover story they recently have characters like the daughter of Aku and Aku in he- in the hell of that world uh, the hell dead or not dead He's fine. The one who's dead is Jack. What? Samurai Jack's dead. Like, and how dead? Haku, and being that Samurai Jack is dead, Aku's a nice guy now. What? In fact, out of all the hell realms, his he, is the nicest. His is the nicest. Everybody in his kingdom loves him. And mm. he, he thought without Samurai Jack, there's no point for being him, for him to be evil. This sound. This sounds like. Uh, and he has a daughter. <laughs> uh, what happened to the sword? Uh, it's with Mandy, but uh, Aku said that she can't use it. So they continued the series in webcomic form. 
It's kind of like a, a stylized content, a stylized uh, continuation, like, uh, for, continuation, yeah, like fa- for it, a sequel far in the future. Imagine like a very good fan fiction turned into comic book. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Because it's not official. Okay, so it's but but, but the they sa- did make. But at the same time, Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon aren't making a fuss about it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But interestingly enough, they did release uh, officially. They, they there were recent releases of uh, comics with. Featuring like Samurai Jack, mm. Dexter, and oddly enough, Ed, Ed, and Eddie crossing over with, I think, uh, the Powerpuff Girls. Yes. What is this? Is uh, a webcomic or like a IDW? IDW. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. The official, in, they were all drawn in the original art that they were drawn in the cartoons. And oh, now okay, they're crossing nice. over, fighting each other, uh, a team up of their villains, Bandark, Aku, uh, Plank. Uh, no, but there that, was that no was one all, um, it was all uh, what's his name that made it right? Uh, J- Jendi Tart- Tart- Tartakovsky. Yeah, yeah, so like, it, it, I guess it makes sense that they all exist sort of in the same universe. Well, yes, uh, th- yes, I don't think Gendi Tartakovsky was involved with uh, Eddie and Eddie. Well, well, then the question goes in. T- then the question changes to: Was he in? If he didn't create it, was he involved? I don't think so. Neither Powerpuff Girls. Powerpuff Girls was done by a friend of Gendy Tartakovsky. Oh, well, close enough, I guess. So, yeah. so he influenced the friend, so technically, to technical involvement. Well, I suppose maybe the IDW just got the rights to make a comic yeah. well, That's sort of what IDW does, right? Like, the, mm. like all, of their, uh, all of their comic books are licensed properties. Yeah, like, uh, they have this really cool series of Godzilla comics. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the funny thing about comic books Where, that are based on movies. What? There's some interesting, weird... I don't know, aura or feel to them. Like back in the nineties, like I remember, I happened across so I back when I was a kid, a Jurassic Park comic books. What? And they were pretty freaky. Like, get this: the storyline had Alan Grant and uh, and then that uh, Doctor Sattler, the, yeah, yeah, the girl yeah, yeah. there. Ellie, Ellie. They were they they went off. It was a, diff- a completely original storyline. They had to rescue a bunch of velociraptors that were kidnapped by these poachers. Huh. They were beaten up, placed in cages, they, and they, two like, of them... Like had, beaten up with hands and fists? I don't know, maybe with clubs and electro things. So, like, what do you mean, though, by they have, like, their f- they have a feel? A weird feel? It's Go like... It, I don't know. It's, it's like, it feels... Like a fan fiction. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that, because... Like, I, I, I see where you're coming like, from. It's like, the, 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 like, seriously, Velociraptor's been kidnapped by these two humans, and then... And they're... At, at the, well, they had fairly okay-looking tech, but then it wasn't that crazy. And it's just a random arse cage holding them in. And then they let them loose, and they slaughtered the... Uh, hunters while they were on a flying plane and then they crashed <laughs> so so what's your take on books like um what's it like like smallville uh what, what are those other books that were continuations of tv series once it was canceled like smallville i know buffy heroes? has one uh not sure does heroes have like a continuation they had a comic that's yeah, but then, like, is it like a, a, continuation? a continuation of I the main story? Don't recall. Well, I can't really say on on those uh, those books because personally, I have not read any yet. Okay. But uh, I suppose they're all right. If I mean, depending on how the series ended. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and if they stay true to the spirit of the story, if of the story of the series, if they are continuing the story, then yeah. I don't think there's any problem. Okay. Yeah, because, uh, what's it? Because, like, uh, Smallville apparently is, like, really good. Ah, uh, Smallville, okay. the comic book. Like, I wasn't a big fan of the show. Ah. But, like, apparently the comic book is pretty good. But because I wasn't a fan of the show, I never picked up the comic, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It makes sense. Makes sense. Speaking of which, th- th- this reminds me that they actually make comics of, of a lot of cartoons that finished a long time ago. Mm. Or, or got cancelled, like, uh. Uh, at a certain point, I think uh, Marvel, Marvel, I think uh, for a sh- certain po- period of time, made gargoyle comics. Gar based on gargoyles, the, mm, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the Disney cartoon. That was, I think it was Marvel. I could be wrong. No, uh, it was Marvel because it was Marvel because most of the properties I knew DC to handle happened to be Warner Car- Brothers. 
Warner Brothers or Cart or properties owned by Hanna Barbera Cartoon Network. Ah. Because they actually made uh, Space Ghost comics. And I think they also made Birdman comics. Yeah, oh. I got the Space Ghost comic. One and it was DC who was responsible for the for those Megas XLR comics. But they were Megas comics. Yes, there were Megas comics. Were they absurd as the show? Yes. Oh, that's good. Or even more absurd. <laughs> or even more absurd. Because here's the thing. I when because I I picked up a Go- Space Ghost comic, one random issue. Because I thought, hey, cool, Space Ghost. I watched the original cartoon when I was a kid. Was it dark? It was darker, Holy wasn't it? Frick, this was dark. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, remember the the Mantis people, the, the eat, race of Zorak? They were eating they, people? They, they were eating people, man, and they looked like Mantises with freaky crocodile heads. And Space Ghost was, like, ripping them apart. <laughs> seriously, man. And the Space Ghost was, like, uh, like some... Like, remember the, the in the... Oh, this I forgot what uh, what what comic this was in DC. The, the one with, with when Superman was... How it had gray in the side. Yeah, yeah. Um, Earth, Earth. That was like an Earth Two Superman might have been. Was uh, that Earth Two or was that the one with the bat with with the old Batman? The one that Superman had to. Fu- there, there was this bunch of new heroes who were running a mock and oh, he had to come back that to one. set everything straight. Oh, but he was too yeah. old, I, f- I guess. Oh, all right. He had like uh, he had that. Mr. Fantastic uh, yeah, Doctor like Strange hair, thing yeah. the gray I recall the that comic I forgot the title but I know that on the back he was like stand he was like st- he was like on st- he was like floating near the graves of his of his parents I, that or was it the graves of the Justice League no no it was the graves of the parents or anyway moving on <laughs> so the space ghost looks like that except without the gray okay he looks like here like that Superman almost exactly the same does he have that he is that Buff. Does he? Does and his face somewhat looks like that too. So does he have the dark? The, does he have the dark? Does he have the dark Batman aura to him? No. Uh, Batman. Batman. Uh, no. Uh, he has a uh, uh, gray Hulk. Ish. Huh. Wait, wait. So you see, like smart talking. No, no, no. No, sorry. Smart talking. No, like gra- this Groff. No, sorry. Groff. Clint Eastwoody. Okay. Ish. Okay, okay. So it's very stoic. <laughs> stoic. <but laughs> like the fitness sp- spaghetti western, like the yeah, guy. Yeah, no, basically, the yeah, the spaghetti western guy that like don't you you don't mess with me or well you're done, you're, you're dead. And but I just have to be honest. That's the best way I could describe it. I just went through the book because it was cool, but I thought it was cool, but. Darn how the dark the dark pre- premise freaked me out compared Mo- to Mo- how I remember the cartoon. <laughs> Confirm Maltar is a lava elemental. Alright, he was. Um speaking of like video uh, not video games, speaking of like adaptations, comics, video games, etc. Uh have you been following Injustice? The mm, the, just, the just comic the book? Com- because like David recommends it like nothing else so I picked up like a couple oh, of issues oh is that based on the video the, game? the video game like the, the video game universe right like oh the, 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 we're, the gonna, world be, where, the we're gonna be spoiling this okay um, the world where Superman goes crazy oh he, yeah. based on that yeah it's, it's that entire universe it's a great book written by this guy named Tom Taylor oh that's cool um, wait Australian... they're still continuing it yeah it's still ongoing yeah it's it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing book oh okay. um, unfortunately Tom Taylor is leaving the book Oh darn! And oh. he 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 was a lot of I think what made the book great because like, uh, because adaptations like comic book adaptations tend not to be very good with the exception say of like Dark Horse Star Wars comics right yeah but um, mm. what's it the Injustice book was actually really good and it just sucks that uh, Tom Taylor is leaving the book well, pretty soon so it's like a a PSA for everybody that's been following the book uh. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I see, and a hearty recommend as well because it's it's, it's a great book. <laughs> yeah, I suppose they added a lot of new stuff. I haven't there exactly to what's just uh, in the game, right? Yeah, like why why uh, why um, uh, Black Canary isn't in there, like that, that, that sort of thing. And did they feed, add in some other characters? Because you know, I'd really be interested to see how Dark Side would. Go just just, about just check the book. Just check the book, man. It's um, really good. It'd be interesting um, to see I, how Dark Side would go about with that Superman, honestly. In just um, the, <laughs> I haven't largely followed in the Injustice comics largely because I didn't really follow the game af- the game after a certain point apart from some coverage from mm. like f- like from yeah. like 
from the from this one guy, uh, Miles one six eight three. He who follows uh, fighting games. Like I have uh, Ma- Maximilian. He, yeah, he okay. he's, he's like a major YouTuber, feature stuff in. That's games. as far as I went with uh, injustice uh, coverage. Okay, but yeah, the it's it's weird, right? Because like coming at it from like I'm not uh, uh, a hardcore gamer by any stretch of the imagination, except for the fact that I do love watching esports and I have a, an APM of like a hundred, two hundred, whatever for StarCraft, which. I'm sure it's a lot slower now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you haven't had practice, I, is all I can say. Is there a rule? What was it? Uh, but, like, I, I'm not, like, a hardcore gamer or anything. It's interesting because when I think of Injustice, I don't think of it as a video game. I think of it as a story because of the comic book. Mm. Okay. So, like... Even though I just started reading the comic book, mm-hmm. like it, it's it's weird because it doesn't make me want to play the game. Mm-hmm. In the same way, I'm sure that anybody that's into the game doesn't really make you want to read the comic. Yeah. Okay. That's true. There's not that com- compulsion, isn't there? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, moving on. Mm-hmm.